Rhodes here. Thank you so much for coming back to watch another video here with me on my YouTube channel. Today is the third in a series for the May stamp set of the month, which is Floral Print Silhouette by Concord and Ninth. It's just a stamp set that I picked because I love it. It's versatile, it has sentiments, it has fun ties with it. So every Monday I am bringing you a video with a new creation featuring the Floral Print floral print silhouette stamp set and die set from Concord and Ninth. And if you haven't seen my other videos, then make sure, go back and watch them, and you will notice that I do a giveaway every week. So I'm gonna announce the winner of last week's card on this video. And I'm gonna put that up on the screen, but this is the card and tag that today's winner will get. And how you win is by commenting on the video. So if you commented on this video last week, you were entered into a drawing to win both of these projects. If you comment on today's video, you will also be entered to win one of my creations. Just so happens last week was a two for one. All right, so when this video is over, make sure you comment and let me know which is your favorite card. So let's get stamping and make something cute featuring the floral print silhouette stamp and die set featuring the bear. I'm starting today's card with a four by four piece of white cardstock, and I'm going to be stamping three of the images from the floral print silhouette stamp set on top of each other to create a unique background. There's a little point at the top of this stamp. I'm just going to use a pencil and indicate where that is so I can line up the other two images with it nice and easy. I'm using Walnut Ink by Lawn Fawn for this most solid layer. Whenever I stamp these, I always start with the solid layer and then add the more detailed images to it but you don't have to. I will show you that later on in this video. So I cleaned that off and I'm switching now to the flower image and it also has that same point at the top of the stamp. So I am lining that up with my pencil mark, scooting the stamp around, and then I'll pick it up with the door of my Misty and ink that up with Plastic Flamingo ink by Lawn Fawn and you'll see how those flowers just stamp right inside. And I went ahead and stamped this two times just to intensify the color, make it more vibrant, and I really like that double stamping look. Then we'll clean that off and put the leaves on. And the leaf image, again, has the same arrow at the top, so it's easy to go ahead and line that up with that pencil mark and get them stamped in just the right spot. So this one we're inking up with another Lawn Fawn ink. This one is Celery Stick, light green color. I like inking the clear stamps up with Lawn Fawn ink because they clean off so easy. And this one stamped beautifully the first time because they're smaller images, so I didn't need to stamp it again, but look how gorgeous. I love it. So now you can die cut this out so you die cut the circle out exactly. Or you could use a larger die where when you die cut it, it has a white edge. I'm gonna cut mine out so there's no white edge, just like that. But I thought I'm gonna use this larger circle and make a mat for it. And after I did that, I decided to use the stitching element die to add some stitching around that just to give it a little bit extra interest and I like how that turned out. Now I'm going to die cut the bear on a piece of corrugated cardstock and I'm just loving the look of that. So then I decided I would bring in a background stamp, a gingham background stamp from Impression Obsession, stamp a piece of bubblegum cardstock with the plastic flamingo ink. Um, this video is one that I did where I designed the card as I was filming instead of beforehand. And I realized that when I do it that way, there's a lot of times where I go off to grab something. And so if you notice the video cuts out a lot, then that's why. Also, um, you can see I reverse stamped. I put the stamp on the base of my Misty instead of on the door and that works really good. So right there, I decided I did not 
like the pink background. So I pulled out a piece of oatmeal cookie cardstock. I'm stamping the same background stamp with oatmeal cookie ink. Liked it so much better. So I just really sped up this part since you already saw me do it. And now I'm stamping two sentiments from that same stamp set. Your kindness means so much, I can hardly bear it. Love that. All right, so that is what I'm gonna go with. I liked that. So now I'm coloring in the center of each flower with the Y02 Copic marker to add a little bit of yellow. I just can't seem to make this stamp image without coloring in the center of the flowers. Like I just have to do it. So now I'm gluing those two pieces together, my two circle elements together, and that'll be the focal point of this card. I love the stitched border around there. It really draws your eye in. The bear is gonna go onto the circle and the card base, I decided I would go with pink. I only have the pink flowers on this card, so I brought in a piece of Sweetberry cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey that coordinates really well with the plastic flamingo and decided that would be the base color for my card. And now I'm adhering the bear on with some foam squares. You can tell by watching this that I have a problem with foam squares. I have to use a lot. I don't know what my deal is, but I really just like things to be sturdy. And I'm gonna just be honest with you. I wanted to put more on than I did, but I knew I was recording. I'm like, you don't wanna see five minutes of foam square application and removal, right? So put on as many as you like. I'm sure it's not necessary for this many. I just really like things to be sturdy. So there the bear goes, popped up. Love it. And now we can put the rest of the card together. And I'm really liking the subtle background on the oatmeal so much better than that pink one. It just didn't, it was too busy. It didn't seem right. All right, so there we have it. We'll glue the bear and the circle into the center of the card. We've got the saying all around. And once I got here, I was like, I need a little something. So I brought in my pink world sequins and I will throw some of those on there for some, I don't know, just like a little pretty effect. You know, I always have to embellish my cards somehow. So I'm just using some journey glue and I'm gonna pour a little bit, well, a little too much, pour out a few of these and then we'll go ahead and stick them on using a jewel picker. A tool like this. Mm, it just makes your day to not have to fuss with sequins and get them on there. Like it makes you want to put sequins on everything. So easy. There we go. And the glue will hold these on really nicely. The journey glue dries clear and it holds them on really well. So there we have it. There is card number one and I adore it. Love it. Now let's check out card number two. So for this card, I'm actually gonna stamp the same exact circle as before. I am now stamping it on a piece of whipped cream cardstock that is four inches by five and a fourth. And I'm using the same exact colors in the same exact order. So again, you're gonna stamp this. I usually stamp this background two times like I'm doing now. I just like when it's a solid image, stamping it two times really make sure that you don't have any areas that are lighter than the other. It's really good. So if you don't have a stamp positioning tool, I recommend it. So there, I'm just cleaning it off with a microfiber cloth and lining up the flowers. Again, the pencil mark at the top makes lining this up so easy. So I would recommend that. The first video I did, I forgot the pencil mark on the first step and it makes a big difference. All right, so you've seen how to do the circle, so I went ahead and skipped over the last step, and I did go ahead and put the yellow centers in. I just loved that. The light yellow is nice and subtle there. So now I decided to turn this card into a shaker card, but my top layer needs to have the circle cut out of it in the same exact spot that the circle is stamped on the underneath piece. So I tape the circle down where, circle die down where my circle is stamped, put the paper underneath, and then pulled off the top layer, 
secured my tape down and ran that through my die machine so that I would have a nice window on my front layer like that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and stamp a sentiment on this. Um, again, I'm creating this card as I am filming, and so some of the steps might seem a little bit out of order because, you know, when you're creating, a lot of times you think of something after you've already done the next step and you kind of have to go backwards. So that's... Um, what you'll see here kind of like I should have die cut that circle first traced it onto the second piece and that's where I stamped my circle but anyway so I just covered that window that opening with a piece of window sheet now I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment and I was kind of deciding between two and I decided to put the I can hardly bear it on the outside of the card with a second sentiment on the inside of the card so that one will be inked up with the plastic flamingo right there below the circle and I again I love to stamp it two times I just do I like um, ink's gonna dry back a little bit and so having a second stamping really helps with that color stay vibrant I've got my scotch 3m foam tape that I'm doubling up and then I'm gonna cut this into strips to use to make my shaker window usually on this tape I cut it into about three strips I like that width a lot and this tape is, I don't, it's just sturdy. You know, some foam tape is a little more bendy. This tape, tape is so sturdy. So to get it to go around a circle, you want to remove the backing from the front and the back, and then it curves around the circle like a dream. It's so good. So that's what I'm doing here. And then when you get to the end, make sure you don't leave an opening and that the ends are butted up nicely together. Mine kind of overlapped a little bit and it, it didn't really go down. So I have a tiny little bump on the finished product, my finished card, but it's not bad, not noticeable. So no one would know unless I told them which I just did. So, all right, I'm taking my anti-static bag and rubbing that on the inside of the circle to reduce static so that the sequins I'm about to put in do not stick to it. They'll shake around freely. I'm using my little Baskin Robbins spoon and putting in three scoops. In hindsight, kind of think I should have just done two, but they're so pretty I couldn't stop. I really like them. So press those down when you're making a shaker card. If there are two stacked up on top of each other, once you um, complete the shaker they won't shake around as much if they're stacked up on top of each other so here I'm just removing all the pieces from my foam and then it can stick on my card front and we'll have the base of our shaker done Ta -da! love it all right then I have the same bare die cut also from the corrugated stock I just really loved that look. This is the first project I've made with this stamp and die set where I did not die cut the image from the floral stamping that I did. So, all right, we're gonna set that aside with a little acrylic block on there because I glued it down to a window sheet. It's gonna take longer. I'm die cutting that same circle with the stitched element from the Coco cardstock. And then I'm gonna take the smaller circle and die cut the center so I have a little frame that is stitched and that is gonna go around the shaker window. So just a little line of glue, um, a little bit will do because if you put too much glue, it's gonna squish out when you press it down. So don't worry about going light on the glue on thin things, it'll work. So I'm just scooting this around to make sure I don't have any white showing and I did pretty good. I think you can see a little white on the finished card, but overall, I think it turned out really good. I like that dark frame. It really focuses your eye in. All right, so now there's this die here that die cuts the flowers that you've stamped. So here I am stamping the same circle, but did you see what I did there? I stamped the flowers and then the solid piece, and it worked out fine. So don't feel like you have to start with the solid one. I found it's just as easy to do it the other way. So then you can take this little die and die cut the center cluster of flowers out of it. And I 
wasn't sure I was going to like having a brown border around it. I was like, mm, maybe I should have stamped it a different color. And by the way, that die only cuts that one set of flowers from there. So once I stuck it on here, I was like, oh my word, I love the brown border. Love it. It's so good. And so I glued that down and thought it looked so good. I wanted another one, but I didn't really want to stamp all of that again. So I'm checking this out and I realized there is a flower there that is not cut off on the edge and I could fussy cut it out to have a second image to go around my circle. So I'm going to use my scissors and do the old fashioned way and fussy cut this out. And then I'll have that same brown border all the way around that is on the first one. And I just thought it looked so good. It reminded me of taking a piece of pattern paper and cutting out a flower that you liked from pattern paper. And I really loved the look. So now I have one for the bottom of my circle. So cute. So we'll glue that one down. And we'll let that dry. Oh, I had a little too much glue. So I just wiped a little excess off on a scratch piece there. So we'll let that dry for a little bit while I clean up. That's what I do when I let it dry. I pick up my desk. So the centers of these flowers also needed colored, so I went ahead and did that with the same Y02 Copic marker, and I thought a few more sequins would not hurt this card at all. It's got the really white, stark card front, so a little, you know, sparkle would look good on it. So I'm doing the same method as before, using the jewel picker and the journey glue. And I love it. I love how this card turned out. So pretty. It's a little bit more feminine. And I love it. So there we have it. All we need now is a card base. This is the same card base I used on the first card, Sweet Berry by Fun Stamper's Journey. And I'll crease that very nicely with my crease tool. And then once I was getting ready to glue this on, I noticed I didn't quite get my card front on straight. So I needed to trim the back layer a little bit so it didn't show. And you know, that's okay. The circle is in the window of the shaker card and that was the important part. So I just trimmed that off and then went ahead and glued it down to my card base like so. And then I decided I'm going to stamp that other half of the sentiment on the inside of the card so that it says your kindness means so much on the inside. And I'm going to use that walnut ink that we used on the front of the card to stamp it. And that is card number two. I'm loving these cards, but I want you to tell me which one is your favorite. Leave a comment below and let me know which one you like. And I'm gonna do a drawing and give away the shaker card. So if you leave a comment, you'll be entered into the drawing. So like this video, leave a comment if you're new here. I'd love it if you subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in any of the supplies I used, I have them linked for you below. And there's also a link to my blog. Happy stamping and thanks for watching. Bye.